Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, here to Wolfie here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare BAFTA build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building HMAS Canberra. HMAS Canberra LO2 is the first ship of the Canberra class of landing helicopter dock in service with the Royal Australian Navy and is the second largest in the Navy, succeeded by its sister ship the HMAS Adelaide L01. Construction of the ship started in Spain in 2008 with the hull launched by Navatina in 2011. The hull was then transported to Australia in late 2012 for competition by Bay, or sorry, for completion by Bay Systems Australia. Canberra was commissioned on November 28th, 2014. So yeah, HMAS Canberra here, a pretty uh, interesting ship, basically a um, amphibious assault ship, I guess very comparable to that of like the Wasp class of American amphibious assault ships. And it pretty much serves that same role. It's got a flight deck for VTOL um, type aircraft or um, short uh, VTOL or short landing and takeoff uh, aircraft, as well as uh, obviously room for helicopters and all that stuff. It does have uh, decks and um, all that below the ship too for allowing of transportation of uh, vehicles and also deploying through a back um, door in the ship. So, uh, very similar to that of the Wasp class, it's just the Australian version, and a uh, pretty interesting ship nonetheless. It's uh, pretty much a giant box, and really, once we take a good look at it here, you'll definitely be seeing exactly why I'm saying that. Uh, it's a cool ship, though, and uh, our first ever uh, Royal Australian Naval ship, so our first ever Modern Warfare one, so uh, very happy to welcome them into our uh, family of BAFTA builds, and uh, hopefully we'll see many more in the future. Before we go and jump in and take a look at the build though, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and place a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a vehicle request of your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel, it's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link for that will always be in my video description. With that though, let's go ahead and dive into taking a look here at um, the HMAS Canberra. So, getting started with the Canberra, we have um, the pretty typical design of a ship here. It's basically got its flat top. Um, really nice markings. I think the markings on the deck came out really, really well and uh, overall looks really good. It does have a ski uh, kind of ramp here, so it kind of helps with those short landing and takeoff um, aircraft, have given them the capability to actually be able to launch from this ship. Um, the detail on the siding is really simple. It's a pretty flat and kind of plain, straightforward ship here. and. Uh, you'll definitely see that here with the um, design of it. There's really not a whole lot going on. It's uh, pretty straight, pretty fl uh, flat and plain for the most part. On the back, we do have uh, some guns, and then we also have the uh, basically um, elevator here that would be able to raise aircraft up into the top deck. And I think that this here is the only elevator. Um, I don't think this one right here is an elevator, but I think it's just this one right in the back here on the stern. Then on this side here, obviously again, not a whole lot going on in terms of detailing. We just have some simple kind of um, doors, um, loading uh, areas for vehicles to be loaded on from the dock, and um, all that stuff. So not a whole lot going on in terms of detail. Uh, we then have a pretty interesting bow. Um, half of it is dedicated to that ski ramp, and then the other half here is this kind of little position, which does house another um, you know, gun. Then we have uh, the deck crane, as well as basically the command tower or the superstructure here uh, which basically houses all of its um, you know bridge and all of its uh, ATC and all that kind of stuff uh, but overall really cool design for the ship I think it came out pretty good and uh, definitely a cool ship to add into our um, BAFTA build fleet especially when we have it right next to the invincible class as well uh, very comparable and kind of um, in, in design and kind of overall uh, functionality and all that so uh, cool ship and with that, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. All right, guys, so moving into our first layer here, we will be going ahead and starting with layer one. Now, a quick few things I do want to mention is if you're completely new to my path to build tutorials, for the first few layers here, mainly working on the draft area, we will be going ahead and doing each layer half on, half off. What this means is we'll be building the center line, and then we'll be building the right side, and then it'll be up to you guys to copy the right side over to the left side. It's pretty straightforward, and once we kind of get for the first few layers here, it will make a little bit more sense as to what we go going on. 
but uh, that is just the way we are going to be going ahead and um, structuring at least the first two layers. Um, but yeah, with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, the first thing to cover here is that if you do want to build this ship in the water, which I imagine most of you will want to do, you do want to make sure you build this a certain height. Now, this right here is going to be layer one is going to be one block underneath the water surface. You can see here the blue concrete representing that top water level and the start of layer one here is right below that. So just make sure you keep that in mind um, as you get started here to make sure that you have this position correctly in the water so it doesn't sit awkwardly. Anyways, once you're good with the position, you are going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and placing down a row of brick top slabs. This right here is going to extend uh, down the entire center line of the ship for a total of 38 blocks. So again, we have 38 blocks of brick top slabs. Then on the side that you want the front of the ship, so we'll have our ship face that way, we're going to place down a acacia wood trapdoor near that front section. And that right there is going to make your center line. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and start working our way out to the sides now. We're going to start off by going ahead and going up to the front here. We're going to go ahead and go back to our fourth brick top slab and we're going to place down one top slab here to the side. We then want to go ahead and go back from that top slab an additional 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32 brick top slabs back. We'll go ahead and just double check our count here and we do have, we have 33 brick top slabs in total. So just like that along the side. And then we have an acacia wood trap door like this on the very end here. Our next row, we're going to go to the second to last brick top side. We're going to place an acacia wood trap door to the side of that. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27 brick top slabs going forward. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and then build our next row out to the side here. This is going to be going ahead and going back to our eighth top slab. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then our eighth one here. And we're going to place down a brick top slab to the side there of that eighth one. After we have that done, we're going to go back from that top slab. One, two, three, four, five. On our fifth top slab, we're going to place down an acacia wood trap door to the side. We're going to go ahead and continue on. So after five, we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So in total, you have a row of 17 here, and then a, another acacia wood trap door like so. We then want to go ahead and go back from this acacia wood trap door, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four of these blocks. Um, we're going to delete them later, so just make sure uh, they're a block that you can tell apart from the ship. And we're just going to place down two more acacia wood trap doors, like so, come off the side there of those blocks. We'll then delete those place our blocks like so. And with that all complete, that's going to wrap up what we have there for layer one. Take a look at it from above as we should have for layer one all complete. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to get started with here, we're going to go ahead and begin with by placing down a brick slab like this, coming off this, or on top of that acacia wood slab. And then we're going to place down two red concrete blocks back, and that's going to do it for our front. We're going to then go to the stern, and we're going to go ahead and go up from this brick top slab at an angle. We're going to place down a red concrete block. An air brick top slab and then two acacia wood trap doors back from that to go ahead and make your stern. And that right there is going to basically complete um, our stern line. Moving out to the sides, we're going to go ahead and place down a red stained glass paint on the side of this block. We're going to go ahead and go back from it with a brick wall and then one, two, three, four red concrete blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down a brick wall on the side of this block and then two red stained glass panes forward. Then one, two, three, four, five, six red concrete blocks back, a brick wall to the side again, and then two red stained glass panes back. We're going to go ahead and then take our red concrete, go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 red concrete blocks. We do want to go ahead and grab some birchwood buttons, and we're going to place down a birchwood button on this block right after this uh, acacia wood trap door. And we then want to go ahead and skip uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces back. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood button on that sixth one there. And that will just be done on both sides there. So just like that. Then we're going to place down a brick upside down stair. Like so. This is going to be a brick top slab. And then we're going to place down a red concrete block here behind that top slab. And then one red concrete block back from that. We then want to go ahead and place down another brick top slab right here. And this is going to be followed up with a red concrete block on the inside here. A second red concrete block back. And then a brick top slab which should connect us there to our middle block that we have set up there. We'll then grab our acacia wood trap doors and we're going to go, ahead and go off of this top slab here. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, and seven back. Then our next row here will be a one acacia wood trap door come off that brick top slab. We're gonna go then grab a brick stair, we'll place it on top of this acacia wood trap door here, and then a brick wall going forward from it. We'll then take a birch wood slab, we'll place it coming off the front of the stair, and a birch wood slab coming off the wall here. After that, we just want to go ahead and place down one, two, and three acacia wood trap doors on the side of those blocks like that. And that right there will wrap up the stern of the ship, and this is what it should look like. Um, overall, this right here is what this layer will look like complete. And one thing you can optionally do as well is to go ahead and fill the inside end of the ship here. This isn't something that you need to completely do, but it is something that I prefer to do just to kind of keep a more solid looking build. Um, and we can just fill this in with red concrete. So it kind of closes it in, fills it in, especially if you're building this in the water, it gets rid of all that water on the inside. Just kind of makes it look a little more better, at least in my opinion. So that right there just kind of fills in, and this right here is again an overview of what this layer looks like from the top down view. Again, that right there is it for layer two. And with that, we'll be going ahead and diving into layer number three. All right, guys, so moving into layer three. Layer three here will be our first layer in which we will be doing uh, basically everything all together. As uh, we do start to get into our differences, so it's just easier to go ahead and start doing everything all together at this point in time. To start with, we're going to place down a stone block up here on the front, followed by an andesite wall to both sides of it. We're going to go ahead and place down two rows of three of stone blocks going across. On your third row, we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane to both sides followed by a second pane back and then another andesite wall. Same thing will be done over here, just like that. We're going to go ahead and fill in the space between those glass panes and those walls with stone, just going ahead and closing that area off. Going back from this wall, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five stone blocks. Same thing over here, one, two, three, four, and five, like so. We're going to go ahead and then grab our light gray stained glass panes, and actually first off our stone brick walls. We're going to place down a stone brick wall here, and then two light gray stained glass panes going forward. And same thing over here, stone brick wall, and two light gray stained glass panes going forward. Now after that is done, we're going to go ahead and place down a narrow stone block going back, and a narrow stone brick wall on both sides. We're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks, and this right here is where we're going to start to get into our differences. For our first side, what we're going to go ahead and work on is our right side. So we're going to go ahead and go back from this stone brick wall, a total of five blocks. One, two, three, four, five uh, stone full blocks back like so. Actually, my bad, it's going to be six. So six stone full blocks in total. We're going to go ahead and grab our stone brick walls again. We're going to place down two more walls. And then another two stone blocks. This second block is going to have a button, virtual button. Then we want to place down one, two, three, four, five, six blocks. And then we're going to place down a virtual button again. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 stone blocks. Again, a birch wood button here on the end. And then 1, 2, 3 stone blocks bringing us to the rear. We then want to take our stone brick full blocks and we're going to place down a row of 5 going across the rear. Then we're going to take our stone blocks 1, 2, 3, and 4 stone or a birch wood button. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 birch wood button. Then two stone brick walls, one, two, three, four uh, stone blocks, birch wood button, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, bring us all the way up there to the front. And that right there is pretty much it. Now at this point, I would go ahead and recommend going ahead and going to the back stern section and anywhere we have these trap doors of acacia wood or those spaces that are left open, I would fill this in with red concrete just to go ahead and close that area off and make the color a little bit more consistent there on the bottom. And then for the rest of this, um, I would especially recommend behind these walls to place down stone blocks just to go ahead and kind of cover, fill those spaces in so you don't have any gaps or showing anywhere between the walls. But again, you can go ahead and choose to fill the inside of the ship in like we did before. Um, this time we'll be going ahead and just using stone to go ahead and fill this completely in. So again, that isn't completely necessary for this layer, but something again that I like to do and would recommend doing it and all that. So anyways, that right there is going to complete this layer, layer number three for the build. Again, looking at it from above, so we should have for the top-down view. With that all complete, that's it for layer three, and with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone block on top of this one here, and we're going to go ahead and follow this up with a stone upside-down stair. We're going to go ahead off the stair to both sides of a stone upside-down corner stair, and then a stone full block right behind those stairs like that. Now, once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a narrow row of three of stone blocks across, followed by a second row, and then to the sides of the first two rows, we're going to place down light gray stained glass panes, and then a andesite wall, 
like that on both sides. On this first class pane, we do want to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame. We're going to place an item frame here on the side of that glass pane. Same thing over here. And we want to go and then place on a crossbow in that item frame. And we're going to have this rotate so it's facing downwards, like so. And those are going to make our anchors. After that's done, we're going to then take our stone blocks. We're going to go back one, two, three, four, five. And same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five. On your fifth block, we're going to place down an anisite wall to the side. And then one and two, like raised stainless panes forward. And same thing will be done over here. So just like that. We're going to go then take our stone blocks. And we're going to go ahead and continue back. One um, and two blocks. Or one and two blocks on both sides there. And, or just one block, sorry. And then we're going to place down our stone brick walls again. On both sides. Now we're going to go ahead and jump back into our differences. So we're going to go and start off our right side again. And for this, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves some gray concrete and also some ladders. We're going to place down a gray concrete block here with a ladder on the side. We're going to go back one, two, three, four, five stone blocks, then two stone brick walls, then one, two, three, four, five, six stone blocks, two gray concrete with two ladders on the side of those blocks, a stone block, gray concrete again with a ladder. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 stone blocks back. After we have that all done, we want to go ahead and then place down an item frame here on the back with a black bed in the item frame. And if you're on Java, we're going to go ahead and also do the extra addition of a birchwood sign on the side here of this block as well. Now just note that if you are not on Java, you won't be able to place down an item frame and sign in the same block space. If that's the case, no big deal. Just go ahead and place down the item frame and disregard the sign. Continuing on, we're going to go ahead and place down another row of five of stone brick full blocks across the back here. A near stone block to the side here. And we're going to go ahead and go forward from the stone block. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then two stone brick walls. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 stone blocks forward to connect us up to the front. We'll do the same thing again with putting stone blocks behind our stone brick walls. And again, you have the option of going ahead and filling the inside in here completely with stone. Not needed, um, but it is something you can do just to make the build again more solid. That right there, though, is going to complete everything we have for layer number uh, four. Taking a look at it from above, this we should have for the top down view so far. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to begin with, we're going to place down a stone block here on the front. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone up sound stair going forward from it. And then we're going to place down a stone stair to both sides of that stone up sound stair. After we have uh, that all done, we're going to go ahead and place down a top slab. I um, don't actually know if I have a top slab handy on me, so I'm going to go ahead and place down a stone top slab to the side of the stairs. And then we're going to place down um, two, or rather, sorry, one stair back on both sides. And then a stone full block. Now, after that stone full block there, we're going to go ahead and build. Um, a row back, so it's going to be one, two, three, four, five uh, stone full blocks back, and same thing over here, one, two, three, four, five. So you have a total of six stone blocks after that stair. We then want to go ahead and place down an inside wall here, and then we're going to place down two light gray stainless panes going forward, and same thing over here, stone inside wall, two light gray stainless panes going forward. Now, at this point here, we're going to go ahead and get into our differences and our sides. On the right side here, to start with, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five stone blocks, a gray concrete, and then a ladder. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone block, two gray concrete blocks, and two ladders on the side of those blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stone blocks, gray concrete with a ladder, a stone block, and then we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a polished black stone button that's going to go right here on the side of this block. We then want to place down one, two, three, and four stone blocks back, and air polished black stone button. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 stone blocks brings to the rear. At this point, we're going to go ahead and just take our stone blocks, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over. And we're going to go ahead and start building this side forward. So we have from this stone block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a gray concrete block, a ladder. We're going to go then grab ourselves a gray bed. We're going to place down a gray bed here. And then an end rod. We do want to make sure we grab our stone blocks. And we're just going to place down our stone blocks behind the end rod. 
and the gray bed like so. And then we're just going to take our stone blocks and bring this all the way forward from the end rod to connect up to our andesite wall here in the bow. So it's going to look just like that along the side there. After that's all done, that is pretty much really it. Um, one thing we can also do is to go ahead and fill in the back here a little bit. So we're just going to go ahead and place down an additional row of five of stone across, followed by two, three, four, and five more rows forward. So you will need to fill that in. That is going to be mandatory because you will have some of this exposed uh, of our deck here. And actually one quick change we're going to make is we're going to go ahead and go to um, these rows here and replace the middle three blocks here with gray wool. So it's going to look like that. So you have uh, two solid rows, then you have the gray wool or three rows with the rows of three of gray wool and then there's that last row of stone. So you will need to make sure that looks like that on the back there. That will be important as that will be kind of something that's to deal with the next layer. So just make sure that's good to go. The rest of this, again, you can leave this open or you can go ahead and fill this in. Either one is optional for us. Again, we'll fill this in with stone to go ahead and give us a nice kind of flat, flat basis here for this um, section. Anyways though, that right there is going to complete everything we have there for layer 5, and with that let's move on to layer number 6. And real quick before we move on to layer 6, I do want to make a few additions here to layer 5 that I did forget to do. First being is we're going to go ahead and go to the front stairs up here, we're going to place down 3 item frames across, followed by black concrete blocks in those item frames, and then birchwood signs across the side of those stairs as well if you're on Java. Then on this side here, we're going to go, go off this glass pane forward, 3 iron trap doors, and that's going to be on the right side and the right side only. Once you have that all done, that is everything we need to add. Um, I just want to make sure that that got um, cleared up, and that was added because I um, wanted to make sure that wasn't uh, wasn't forgotten. And also, this stone top step here is not here, so just make sure that gets deleted, and that's going to be on the right side. So our right side is now going to look like that. So again, just make sure you make those quick adjustments there. Um, and with that, we are done with layer five, and we'll move on to layer six. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer 6. Layer 6 here is going to be a little bit of an odd layer as we do have the ski deck that kind of comes into play here. And also that little uh, position there with the gun and stuff like that on the, on the bow here. So things are going to get a little funky and plus this is the layer right before we actually build our um, deck. So just keep that in mind as well. Now we're going to start off by going ahead and placing down a stone block on the center. So we have the center stair right here. We're going to place down a stone block like that. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone upside down stair coming off of it. Now we're going to start our attention here over here on the right side. We're going to build back an additional stone block down the center. And we then want to go ahead and place down a stone block that comes off to the side here. So it's going to kind of come off at an angle. And we're going to have a stone block like that. We're then going to place down a light gray stainless pane here. A narrow stone block. A narrow light gray stainless pane. And a narrow stone block. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some redstone repeaters. Some gray carpet. A grindstone. A chain and we're gonna go ahead and build this section here. So for this section, super simple, we're gonna place down a grindstone here, have that chain coming off of it facing forward. We're gonna place down a redstone repeater here, not to spread apart, same thing over here on this iron trap door, and then lastly, a light gray carpet right there. So really simple, that's gonna be that little fighting position there to the side. Now, once we have that done, uh, we're gonna go, ahead and go back from this uh, with one, two, three, four, five, and six stone blocks. On the side of these blocks, we're going to go ahead and go to the second one. We're going to place down an iron frame. And in that, we're going to go ahead and place down an iron bar. So we'll grab an iron bar, and we're going to place down an iron bar in that iron frame. We're going to go ahead and then grab some polished blackstone buns again. And we're going to place down two polished blackstone buns after that. We're going to go ahead and then skip a space, and then two more like that going back. We're going to go ahead and leave that as is for right now, and we're going to go ahead and then focus our attention over here to the left side. So the left side here um, is going to be obviously different because we do have that ski ramp. We're going to go, and go off the stone stair one and two more stairs over. We then want to go ahead and place down a stone top slab, come off this stone stair here, and we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of four of upside down stairs along the side here of this top slab. So one, two, three, four. This is going to then lead into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stone full blocks. So basically you want to bring it to this point here and we should kind of be in line with um, both sides at this point in time. So again, this right here is what the front looks like so far. Now, once we get to this whole point, uh, we're also going to go and take some iron trap doors, and we're going to go and go to the last stair and the first stone block. We're going to place down two iron trap doors there to the side of those blocks like that, and we're going to leave that as, as is for right now. We're going to then go back over to our right side, and we're going to go ahead and work on our right side, um, getting that built up. So for this, we're going to place down two more gray. Uh, concrete blocks with ladders on the side there. 
We then want to place down one, two, three stone blocks on the last two blocks, two polished black stone buttons. Then we're going to place down one, two, three stone blocks, two gray concrete, two ladders, a stone block, polished black stone button on that. Then we're going to take our stone brick walls and we're going to place down one, two stone brick walls. Then, uh, or actually rather, sorry, first a gray concrete block, then a ladder, then two stone brick walls. Then a row of one, two, three of stone, two stone brick walls again, stone block, gray concrete with a ladder. And we're also going to place down one more gray concrete block behind that. We then want to place down a row of one, two, three stone blocks, gray concrete block with a ladder, a narrow stone block. And we're going to then grab ourselves a gray bed again. And this here is going to go right here. And we'll take our stone blocks and place down two stone blocks on the inside there to cover up that inside. Then our gray concrete again, two gray concrete blocks, two ladders on the side there, and then one more stone block here. We're going to then take our stone blocks, we're going to build one, two, three in this space, and then one, two, three over. And after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then take our iron trap doors and we're going to place down one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three across that space. Then continuing on, we have our kind of rear position here, or rear guns, whatever you want to kind of call this area. This is going to be a grindstone on top of this stone block here in the corner, and coming off of it, we're going to go ahead and place down a chain. We then want to go ahead and place down a compar redstone comparator here, and a redstone repeater to the side of it like that. The rest of this will be covered up with gray carpet, so we're going to place down one here, one, two, three, four over, so you have a total of five there, and then a narrow row of three here. We'll repeat the same design we did over there on that side, just over here to this side. So, same exact thing, using our same blocks, and it's going to look just like that in the corner here. We're going to go ahead and place down our stone blocks here, or we have our two stone blocks, like this, and then we have one, two, three on the inside there, filling that space in. Now on the side of this, we want to go ahead and place down a polished black stone button here, and then we're going to place down two more blocks forward with two buttons on the side. We're going to go ahead and take our gray concrete, we're going to place down gray concrete, ladder on the side, two stone blocks forward, two buttons on the side of the stone blocks. We're going to go then place down one, two, three stone blocks forward again. This time we're going to place down two stone brick walls. Then again, one, two, three, four, and five stone blocks. This will be followed up with a gray concrete block and a ladder. Then again, one, two, three, four, and five stone blocks. Gray concrete with a ladder. And then two stone brick walls, two stone blocks, two polished black stone buttons on those blocks, gray concrete with a ladder, stone block, two stone brick walls. And then at this point in time, we have our left side done, and it should connect up to our forward or front of our ship like that. And this right here is basically what you want. Now, at this point in time, I would recommend, or actually, I, what you need to do is you do need to fill the inside in here of the ship. Now for me, I'm going to go ahead and use gray wool. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill the whole inside in here with gray wool. And you're going to want to do the same thing. As we will be using a little bit of the top surface of these gray wool blocks to attach uh, buttons to and all that. And uh, just kind of shows us exactly where our deck is going to kind of be sitting. So um, this right here is a layer that does need to be filled in completely. As we will be going ahead and putting carpets on top of this as we build our next layer. So. Again, just keep that in mind. Um, that right there is going to wrap up everything we have there for this layer. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number seven. All right, guys, so jumping into our next layer, we have layer number seven. For layer seven to get started with here, we're going to go ahead and first go to our ski jump here. And we're going to go ahead and just place down a row of four of stone stairs upside down, coming off the front here like that to go ahead and start our ski jump. After we have that all done, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone block here to both sides. And then we're going to place down two gray wool blocks here in the center. If you're on Java, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of four pistons. If you're not on Java, instead of the pistons, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone block on both sides, just like we did before, and gray wool across. So again, if you're not on Java, we will place that. If you are on Java, we'll place down the pistons. After those, that row right there, you can go ahead and either place down a narrow row of four pistons for Java players, or you're going to place down a uh, polished blackstone, polished blackstone slab and then a birchwood slab, and then two polished blackstone slabs. So you, you will either place this row here, um, or if you're on Java and you have the pistons, we're going to place down um, the pistons. So after that, we have a polished blackstone slab, birchwood slab, and two more slabs, and we're going to go ahead and repeat this same design one more time. 
So just like that. Now after that is all done, uh, also on the front here, just so we don't forget about it and we can just knock it out now, uh, we are going to place down one, two, three yellow wool, and then two gray carpet over here. And then one yellow carpet come off that center of that row of three, and then gray carpets to both sides. And you'll basically place the same design here, so if you have stone full blocks right here, uh, or the gray wool, we will be going ahead and kind of bringing that back like that. But if you have the pistons, we're just going to go ahead and leave it as is. After that, we want to go ahead and grab our daylight detectors. We're going to place down a row of four across. And we're going to go ahead and turn these all to night mode. And we then want to go ahead and grab our trap doors. We're going to place down two birchwood trap doors here going back, two iron trap doors here to both sides like so. And that right there is going to kind of create our ramp like so. Now if you are in Java, we will be going ahead and using a debug stick here at this point. So to get this debug stick, it's pretty simple. You go ahead and type in this command right here, slash give space at p space, space minecraft colon debug underscore stick, and you'll get this glowing stick here. What we're going to do with the stick is we're going to go, and go to the pistons here. We're just going to right click them to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion, and that will kind of set up our deck there um, like that. So that's the shaping we have going on there for that. At this point though, both uh, for both uh, versions, we'll go ahead and grab our grindstones again. We're going to place down a grindstone on top of this iron trap door, followed by a chain to the side, and then a gray carpet on top of that iron trap door. With uh, that all complete, we're going to go ahead and then uh, grab ourselves uh, some of our white carpet and our yellow carpet here, and also some of our birchwood buttons, and we're going to go ahead and start setting up the markings here for our deck. Now, one thing we also want to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and grab some yellow wool here. And we do want to go ahead and go to this section right here, uh, right here, so right where the stone block is after those two gray concrete, we're going to go ahead and replace that one block there with yellow. So just make sure that gets placed. Uh, but once we have that done, we're going to take our yellow carpet, we're going to place down one, two, or rather actually we're going to go ahead and go out to the side of this, one yellow carpet, and then we're going to go forward one, two, three, then we're going to go over one, two, and then back one. And what we're going to have here in its place is we're going to go ahead and place down two inside walls. So one, two right there, that'll be the start of our bridge. And we're also going to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence post that'll be on top of this gray concrete block here. We're also going to go ahead and take an anvil and we will be placing down an anvil here on top of that stone block. And that'll basically look something like that. Now we're going to then take our white carpet, we're going to place down one, two, three, white carpet across this space, then one, two going forward and we'll fill in the rest of the space up here with gray carpet. So I would recommend filling in the, it with gray carpet just so you keep the levels you know, the same. As you can see, the white carpet obviously has that little level to it, and the yellow carpet, just carpet in general. And I think that gray carpet in just kind of helps bring it all to like a level. Um, it makes, it makes it all level. So I do recommend that um, to go ahead and do that, but again, it's not something you need to do. After that though, continuing on with our markings, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of yellow carpet that's going to go from those birchwood trap doors all the way to the stern of the ship. So this is just going to follow the straight line all the way down the ship, and it's going to go ahead and end on that last stone block. We then want to go ahead and go around these iron trap doors, and we're going to go ahead and surround this with yellow wool, or that yellow carpet, and we'll then go ahead and place down gray carpet all over those trap doors for our elevator. Going back up to the front, we're going to go and start setting up our uh, little white line markings. Now this is done by placing down a white carpet. The first ones here are going to be on top of this wall. And then we're going to build one and two more over across the side of that yellow line. We're going to go then place down a white carpet here, and then one at an angle. And then we're going to place down two, in, sorry, three birchwood buttons like so. We're going to go then go back, two birchwood buttons, then a white carpet, birchwood button, then a white carpet. From this white carpet, we're going to go ahead and go um, over one and then one here, and then also a white carpet on this side. Then this white carpet is just going to go across from this point and end on top of that stone brick wall. Again, we'll take our gray carpet here, and we're just going to go and fill in uh, these spaces like so. So any empty spaces, again, we'll just take our gray carpet and fill it all in in between here. So this will get filled in like that. Then we're going to go and take our birchwood buttons, and we're going to go ahead and go back one and two again. White carpet, birchwood button, white carpet, one forward, one back, one across, one white carpet right there. Same design, and then again our gray carpet is just going to fill in the space like so, between those white carpets. Then continuing on, we're going to go and take our virtual buttons, this time we're going to go back three, another white carpet, button, 
white carpet, one over, one forward, one across, and one here. Again, our gray carpet. Like that. Then, continuing on, we're going to go ahead and go back again. Three birchwood buttons. Then a white carpet here. Birchwood button. White carpet. And this white carpet is going to go all the way across and connect over to the air side. This uh, second to last block, we're going to go and then go white. Or the second to last white carpet, we're going to go and then go two white carpet forward. And we want to go and then place down one back here. One to the side of it. And one across the way like that. Again, our gray car carpet, we'll go ahead and just fill in these spaces like so, and also these two spaces like that. Then continuing on, we're just going to go and take our virtual buttons, we're going to place down, again, three going back here, and we're just going to place down our gray carpet now. So this is just going to cover up these sides here. Same thing over here. Just like that, all the way across there. Now, after we have that all done, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves some glass panes and some stone blocks. We're going to go ahead and go back from the andesite walls. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 uh, stone blocks on the inside here. And then we're going to place down like gray stainless paint. We're going to go ahead and place down one more paint over, and we're going to go and do the same thing. Bring in a row of stone of uh, 17 all the way up to connect up to those walls there. And after you have that all done, that right there is going to basically complete that and the final thing we're going to do here for this layer is we're going to take some iron bars and we're going to place down three iron bars that go up from those glass panes here so just like that and after that's all done that right there is going to conclude everything we have there for layer seven i'll go ahead and give you guys a nice aerial view so you'll be able to see exactly what we have going on here but yeah this right here is what we want from the top down view with um, this layer complete and with that all done that is going to conclude layer seven our deck markings and we're going to go ahead and now start moving into our superstructure so with that, let's move on to layer number eight. All right, guys, moving into our next layer here, we have layer number eight. For layer eight to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to be going ahead and going to the front, and we're just going to place down two light gray stainless panes on top of those inside walls. We're going to go then go back from each of those glass panes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 stone blocks back. And then again, over here, same thing, 17 stone blocks back, like so. Now on the sides here, we're going to go ahead and take our polished black stone buttons, we're going to place them on the right side here, so the outside of the ship, we're going to place down a button here, then a lever, then we're going to follow this up with two buttons, a lever, we're going to go and skip one, two, and three spaces, then another lever, two buttons, lever, and then one, two, three, four, five buttons back. On the other side here, it's going to be pretty much the same thing, one, two, three, four, five buttons, a lever, two buttons, a lever, we're going to go and skip a space of three, lever, two buttons, and then we're going to place down a stone brick top slab and then an iron trap door. So that will be a little bit diff the difference there on the right side. We also want to go and grab a skeleton skull, we're going to place this down on top of this anvil here, and we then want to place down three um, end rods going back from that skeleton skull for our deck crane. Now after that is all complete, one thing also I want to go ahead and mention here is going to be the um, numbering on the side of the ship here. Now, the Canberra goes by L02, and this is basically, is, or L02, I should say. And this is going to be very simply done with you making a L, a 0, and a 2 banner. Now, there are plenty of tutorials out there that do go over these banners and how to make them, and they will be done using a light gray banner and a white uh, lettering. So, I'm not going to go ahead and cover how to do those banners in this tutorial. However, there are plenty of tutorials out there that will cover how to do these banners for all game versions. So, just go ahead and keep that in mind, and feel free to take some time now in between... Uh, this layer and the next one to go ahead and copy those banners over or if you don't care about the banners obviously it's not something major that does need to be transferred over anyways though that right there is going to conclude everything we have there for layer eight and with that we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number nine all right guys moving into our next layer we have layer number nine for layer nine here we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and place down two stormbrick slabs on top of these glass panes so just like this we're going to go ahead and place down item frames around the uh these four sides like so, and we're going to go ahead and place down black beds in the item frames uh, position like this. So it's going to look just like that, and that's going to be around these slabs here. Now again, if you're in Java, we're going to go ahead and take our birch with signs, and we're going to go ahead and place them on the side here of the slabs as well. So again, that will be for Java players. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair on this side, like so, and then a stone brick slab. We then want to place down a wither skeleton skull coming off the side of the slab. On the right side over here, we're going to go ahead and place down an item frame and another black bed, which will be rotated like so, and again a birchwood sign. 
our next uh, section here, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, andesite wall, which is going to be positioned right here. And then we're going to place down a birchwood fence post and then a stone brick slab here to the side. On the side of the stone brick slab, we're going to place down an item frame, black bed sideways, and then a birchwood sign. And over here on this side, if you're on Java, we'll place down an item frame on the side of this block and again a black bed in the item frame, rotate sideways. If you're not on Java, you're going to go ahead and uh, just place down a end rod like so, and you're going to go ahead and disregard that um, item frame. If you're on Java, you can go and do both, the end rod and the item frame like so. After that is all done, we're going to go ahead and then uh, continue to work our way back. We're going to place down a stone block behind that and the side wall. And we then want to place down a stone brick slab here to the side with a wither skeleton skull coming off the side of that slab. We're going to go ahead and place down another stone brick slab here. This is going to be followed up with a birchwood sign on the side here. And then on this side right there, we're going to go ahead and place down a piston. So we're going to place down a piston there. An alternative to that piston would either be a stone full block or a stone stair like that. Uh, but for us, we'll place the piston since we're on Java. Now, once we have that done, we're going to place down two gray carpets. And we'll take our debug stick now for Java players. And we're just going to go ahead and right click that piston, like so. Continuing on, we're going to go and take our gray carpet. We're going to place down a narrow row of two. Stone block on the right side there. Then gray carpet. We're going to place down there two gray carpet across. This is going to be then followed up with a daylight detector on the right side there. And then a gray carpet over. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some glass panes again, and we're going to place down a row of two of glass panes. Then we're going to place down two stone blocks and two glass panes. On the side of the stone block, we're going to place down an um, item frame to both sides. And in this item frame, we're going to go ahead and look for the beet root. So it's going to be this right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to place it down in the item frame. So it's like this on the right side, and then over here, it will kind of be like that. And what this is meant to represent is the little red kangaroo that uh, they do have on both sides here. It actually kind of works, surprisingly. It's not perfect, obviously, but it uh, kind of represents that. If you kind of stretch your uh, imagination a little bit, that looks like a kangaroo, I guess. So that's on both sides there. We're gonna go then place down another two rows of two of gray carpet, then two stone blocks, and another set of two stone blocks, and then two more gray carpet there on the very end. And we're gonna go ahead and also grab ourselves some chains and iron bars. We're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and going into these levers here to to more toward the aft of the superstructure. We're going to place down chains, and then we just want to place down one, two, three iron bars up from those. Same thing over here, one, two, three. We're going to go ahead and place down four iron bars up from these levers. So the same thing here on both sides, and we're going to do the same thing here for these levers right here. So just like that, and now we'll kind of finish these antenna that are like that on the sides there of the superstructure. And with that, that is going to conclude all we have there for layer 9. And at this point in time, we will be going ahead and moving into our last final layers of the build. So uh, with that, let's move on to our last final layers. All right, guys, moving into our final layers, we have layers 10 through 15. These layers here, again, are going to be exclusively working on the superstructure. And let's get started here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to place down two chains on top of that slab right there. And then we're going to then place down two chains over here to the other slab. So it's going to look just like that. After that's done, we're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of this stair here. Then a skeleton skull on top of this end rod over this side, and then also on top of that birchwood fence post. We then want to place down a light gray stainless pane here, stone block behind that, followed by an iron trap door to both sides of that stone block. And on top of those, we're going to go ahead and just place down some flower pots, so like that. We then want to place down an andesite wall here, and then an iron bar on top, and then one iron bar out to both sides like that for this kind of forward mass with the little radar system there. Once uh, that's all done, we're going to go ahead and continue on. We're going to go back to this stone block right here. If you're on Java, we'll place down an um, inside wall. If you're not on Java, we'll place down a stone full block. Since we're on Java, we're going to place down our wall. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to build one block that goes forward from the wall and back from the wall. So like that to the sides. We'll go ahead and grab our levers and we're going to place down levers here. And we're going to use our debug stick here to go ahead and left click the lever until we get selected facing. We'll then right click it until we rotate it around to come off the sides of the wall. And again, if you place down the stone full block, you're able to just go ahead and place down the, the uh, levers right to the block. We then also want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull. One on top of this gray carpet and one here to the side like that on both, both sides there. On top of this, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair. 
like so. An iron trap door on top, which we'll use our debug stick here to manually open it. So we're going to go ahead and left click this until we get selected open false. We'll right click it and it should open up like that. And again, an alternative to that would be to use a birchwood trap door instead on top there. Then on both sides of this stone brick stair, we're just going to place down an iron trap door like that to the sides. Continuing on, uh, we then want to go ahead and go back to this section here. We're going to go ahead and place down a black or two wither skeleton skulls there on top. And we're also going to go ahead and place down an end rod to the right or to the left side here with the skeleton skull on top of that. We then want to place down a row of two, the vein inside walls here on the back. Then we're going to place down two light gray stainless paints. On top of these uh, walls here, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone slab. So don't think I have one lurking around here too easily. So we're going to go ahead and just grab one from over here. So we're going to place down a stone slab here. And then an andesite wall here. Then a wither skeleton skull here. And then an end rod to both sides of the wither skeleton skull. Going up from the andesite wall, we're going to place down an end rod. Followed by an end rod to both sides of that end rod. Another end rod up. Another end rod to the sides. Followed by a birchwood fence gate on the very top here. We'll open this forward, and then we're going to place down an end rod on the very top of that for that rear mast. And once we have that all done right there, that is going to complete that rear mast. And with that, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for layers 9 through uh, 15. And that right there is going to complete my tutorial here for the HMS Canberra uh, amphibious uh, or landing helicopter dock, I guess you can call it. But uh, overall, cool ship and our first uh, ship ever to be added into our Royal Australian Navy for our Modern Warfare section. So really happy to have them included in here and uh, right next to our British. Uh, but with that, though, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Hope you guys do enjoy. If you do abuse this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This will be linked from a sign of the build to link to my channel or this video if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for your freeze of every project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build. Have fun with it and all that fun stuff. And um, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Foss Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2 4 and I'll see you guys next time.